Hi guys, how are you? My name is Uram and today we will talk about ESX Promises. Promise represents an asynchronous task and gives us ability to keep track its final, its eventual completion or failure, returning the result of this asynchronous task. Promise object has three states. Pending, meaning that you initialize the promise but it's not yet resolved, um, it's not yet finished. Fulfilled when the promise was finished and it was successfully finished and rejected when it was not successfully finished. When you create an instance of a promise, the first and the only argument which is required in the promise constructor is function which takes two arguments. This function is called executor function and the function is called immediately when the promise um, constructor is called. And the function is called even before the instance is returned from the constructor. The executor function initiates some asynchronous code and when resolve callback function is called the promises result and when reject callback function is called promises rejected. A pending promise can either be fulfilled with some data of the result of the asynchronous work or it can be rejected with some kind of reason why it was rejected. You can even don't pass anything in the resolve and reject callbacks. Let's start coding. Here's my simple code on promise. I am creating an instance of a promise passing the executor function which takes two arguments resolve and reject. I initiate some asynchronous work here calling set timeout passing callback function and when the set timeout callback function is executed it executes my resolve also. How can I how can I add my callback my resolve so I know when the resolve is called when the set timeout finishes working. In promise prototype it has two functions catch and then. Then both of them accepts a callback. Then callback is executed when promise is resolved and catch callback is executed when the promise is rejected. Let's add our callback functions in then and catch. Now let's run this code and see the output. After two seconds I see promise resolved. I can pass some data here and accept in my then callback. Name is John and my data is here, which I can also print. If I call a reject from the set time of callback, the function, the promise will be rejected and my catch callback will be uh, called. So reject and run it. And after two seconds, promise rejected is printed. Then method accepts second callback function, which is for reject. I can, I can delete my catch method completely and write this console log statement in the second callback function of then, which is for reject. The same, call, the same output promise rejected. Then and catch methods can return another promises and you can chain your then method. Let's get back to our callback hell and convert the code to a promise chain. Here's my callback hell. First of all, I need to rewrite my request method so that instead of accepting a callback, I need my request method to return a promise so that I can call a then method on the promise passing the callback function there. I'm returning new promise immediately 
passing executor function as the first and only argument. I am initiating my asynchronous work in the executor function. And whenever I have successful response, I'm calling resolve, which of course I need to accept in my executor function. And if the response is not successful, I am calling reject. Now my request method doesn't need callback argument anymore. Um, it returns promise so I can add then, so I can call then method on this promise. First of all, let me delete my request for todos. I don't need it. Let's rewrite our request nested callbacks into promise chain. Request method doesn't accept callback function anymore, so I'm gonna delete this callback. Instead, request returns a promise, so I'm gonna call then method on this promise, passing a callback function which now will receive users. And my callback function, which I copied, comes here, except I don't need that comma. Okay, then and catch functions, as I mentioned before, can return another promise and you can chain and call your then method multiple times. So here I can directly return a new promise, which is promise returned from this request method. I don't need this request anymore also here. I'm printing users and returning a new promise. And I can call then here for which will be then for the new promise. And I can return another promise from here and adding another then. Now let's see the output in the browser. Let's execute it. And here is my output. First on line three, users are printed. And here are my users. Then on line seven, posts are printed. And then on line 11, comments are printed for the first post. What about handling errors? when I have typo in my URL and I execute it. One request uh, will return uh, 404 and I have an error in my console, uncode, uncode in promise, which is exactly what we don't have here. We don't catch our errors. One thing is, of course, to write callback functions, second callback functions for each then, and here like this, and here also, and here. But second, and I think, and probably you agree, uh, is more convenient way writing a single catch here, which accepts the error, and I print my error here. Now my error, which is printed on line 14, is an empty object. That's because the error, the object is whatever is passed in the reject. If we look our request method again, we see that we are calling JSON parse on response text and returning that. But response text actually does not exist. So let's return the whole request object if we have an error. Now, on line 14, when I print error in the catch, I have the whole XML HTTP request. I can see what is this status, which is 404, and I can see that, oh, my URL is not correct. So, that's it. 
this is the end of the video thanks for watching see you in the next time